Hi everyone, my name is Alexi and today I'm gonna show you how I built my own 50 pound power hammer. So this video is the second of a three-part series where I'm going to show you how to build this machine. In part one, we covered everything from the structure to the main shaft. In this part, we're going to cover the brake and motor mount, the ram and the tire assembly. If you want to follow along and build a hammer for yourself, we have the plans available for you in the description below. On that, let's continue the build. Now that the DuPont linkage and the main shaft assembly are finished, we can go on and make the brake and motor mount assembly. Now that everything is all cut, it's time to weld the pedal assembly. So this hardware is what links the pedal assembly to the motor mount. It's now time to play with electricity and make the wiring for the motor. It's now time to play with electricity. Now I will wire the motor to the safety switch. In a build like this, it's super important to have a safety switch that can rapidly shut off the current if you need to. We are now at the step in our build to mount the tire to the main shaft. The best thing to do that would be a flange shaft adapter 
that fits this bolt pattern. But I couldn't find anything on the internet that would fit a one and a half inch shaft and a, I think it's four and a half inch bolt pattern with five bolt. So we have a few options. The first thing that I thought was to take something like a sprocket like that, that would fit the inside diameter here and we could just weld the, the tire to the sprocket and have a perfectly functioning shaft adapter. On McMaster car they said on the spec that the inside diameter here was 3 inches but it's something more like 2 and 7 8. So the sprocket I bought is of course too big, I, I bought a 3 inch hub sprocket. So I could machine it to 2 and 7 8 inch because I have a lathe. But instead of using the sprocket I got this piece of steel that is a cutoff from the anvil base of the power hammer. And instead I think I'm gonna machine a piece, a flange piece that will have a one and a half inch diameter inside to fit the shaft and I'll make a nice flange that will fit perfectly the bolt pattern here. If you don't have a leg, I will give a link to a sprocket with the proper outside diameter here. But if you have a leg, of course it's better to make a perfect flange fit for the bolt pattern here. So I just received this piece of steel. It's a 4x4 piece of mild steel, cold roll. I chose cold roll because the face are already machined, so I don't have to face them on the mill. I just need to mill out some slots on both sides here in order to make it fit in the DuPont linkage. So this is what I need to remove on both sides. I have a mill, so I'll do it on the mill. It's easier and the best way to do it. But if you don't have a mill, you could easily do it with an angle grinder. I would personally drill some holes here, half inch, three quarters of an inch, whatever you want. And go then after with a zip cut and cut these two cuts. Like that, you could, it wouldn't be perfect, but it would probably work.
at this point I'm drilling holes on the lower face of the ram to be able to mount the upper die. All the pieces are pretty much done, so it's time to make a test on the power hammer. So I was testing out the hammer by rotating in by, with my bare hands and a little issue happened with the ram guide so I'll show you what happened and what I'll do to fix it. So this is the left side of the plastic bearing surface of the ram guide and this is what happened after I tried to use the motor to rotate it. So what happened I think is that the ram went just a bit sideways and because the edges of, on the top are really sharp it grabbed on the plastic and pulled it out. So I'll remove the ram and put a heavy chamfer on all the edges to make sure that it can not never grab on again. I'll see if this fixes it. If it does I'll be really happy otherwise I'll have to find another solution. I now have a heavy radius all over the edges, so it should work a lot better. Now that I'm sure that the hammer will run, I can fully weld all the tags that I did before. Now that the hammer is pretty much running, it's time to make the dies. So for the dies, I will use 4140 steel. You could use 1045, 4340, or anything that is tool steel or harder than mild steel. 4140 is the choice for me. The dies are the two parts that will hit each other. So this is a piece of one and a half by two inch, and I cut section of four inch in length and they will hit each other.
So yesterday I tried hardening the dies with an oil quench, but as you can see here, I could easily center punch these two dents here. So I'm pretty sure they are not hardened. So I'll try quenching them in water today to see if it makes any difference. So the water quench did work. It's now hardened and I just surfaced the, the top here. They are now ready to be installed on the power hammer. So this is it for part two. If you want to see the next video, you can click over here. The plans are for sale in the description below. And as always, we really hope you enjoyed. And if you did, leave a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing. See you in the next one. À la prochaine.